Have you ever wondered if there's more to the creation story than what you've read in the Bible? What if I told you there's a version that was banned from the Bible, and it suggests something shocking that Satan may have had a hand in the creation of Earth? Stay tuned as we dive deep into this controversial topic and explore an ancient narrative that's been kept out of most religious teachings. This is the story that the church didn't want you to know. Hey, here's something most people don't talk about. Did Satan play a role in creating the earth? I know, it sounds crazy, right? But stay with me, because this question isn't as out there as it seems. We all know Satan as the ultimate villain in the Bible, the great deceiver. But there's this lesser known idea hidden in ancient Gnostic texts that completely flips the traditional story on its head. Imagine this, the God we read about in the Old Testament the one who created the world, what if he isn't the all-good, benevolent figure we've been taught to believe? What if that God is actually… Satan? Yeah, you heard me right. Some early Christian groups, like the obscure Apizzi sect, held this shocking belief. They thought the world, with all its suffering, pain, and chaos, wasn't created by a loving God, but by a flawed, lesser being called they Demiurge. And here's the twist they equated this demiurge with Satan. In their view, the material world is like a prison, and humanity is trapped in it by Satan, who's disguising himself as the creator. It's a pretty wild concept, right? It turns the Genesis story upside down. You know the famous verse, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth Genesis 1, 1. Well, what if that God wasn't who we think he was? Now here's a thought, what if the Gnostics were right? What if the one responsible for creating the earth isn't a god of pure goodness, but instead a being that keeps us in the dark, blocking us from seeing the true light? Hold on, let's take a step back. I'm not saying the Bible directly tells us Satan created the earth. But what if some of those ancient alternate texts offered a completely different take on the creation story one that didn't make it into the official version we know today. In Gnostic thought, the true God, the one above everything, is a being of pure light, entirely separate from the one who crafted the physical universe. They believed the creation of Earth was flawed from the very beginning. And the one responsible? That's where things get murky. The line between creator and deceiver starts to blur. And here's where things get even wilder. In Job 1, 7, Satan is described as roaming the earth. And in Luke 4, 6, Satan boldly claims that the kingdoms of the world were given to him. What if he wasn't lying? Could these be clues hiding in plain sight, hinting that Satan has a much bigger role in this world than we've been led to believe? It really makes you think, doesn't it? Could the earth have been designed by someone or something other than the God we've been taught to trust? Here's a thought. What if the earth was designed to be imperfect, full of suffering and hardship, by a creator with a hidden agenda? Could the God in Genesis actually be playing both roles the creator and the adversary? In this view, Satan's rebellion might not be about defying God, but about revealing the flawed nature of the world he helped create. So why have we never heard these stories? Why don't we see any mention of Satan creating the earth or these alternative narratives in the Bible we know today? Well, here's where things get a little uncomfortable. Control. The early church wasn't just focused on spreading the gospel, they were also very concerned with maintaining authority. And when you're in control of shaping an entire religion, you have to decide which ideas get included and which get buried. You've probably heard of the councils of Nicaea and Chalcedon, right? These were huge moments where church leaders gathered to settle some major theological debates. They decided, once and for all, what would be considered orthodox and what would be labeled heresy. What's wild is that many early Christian beliefs didn't make the cut. They were erased or branded as dangerous heresy to preserve a unified doctrine. And some of those lost ideas, they painted a very different picture of creation and the role of Satan it makes you wonder how much of the story we know today was shaped by those in power and what stories were left out. Ever heard of the Gnostic texts? If not, 
There's a reason for that. These texts were seen as dangerous like existential threat level dangerous to the church's control. Why? Because they didn't follow the official narrative. And here's the kicker. A lot of these texts told creation stories that make Genesis look tame. In these Gnostic cosmologies, the God of the Old Testament wasn't the true God. Instead, Satan, or figures associated with him, played a critical role in creating the material world. This was a radical departure from the familiar story, and the people in power weren't too happy about it. They couldn't allow these ideas to spread because they challenged the version of the story the church wanted to promote. So, what did they do? They banned the books, labeled them as heretical, and worked overtime to erase them from history. The result? The creation story most of us grew up with became the only creation story that survived. Think about that for a second. What if this was never just about spiritual truth, but about controlling the narrative? A lot of early Christian sects had completely different beliefs about creation versions where Satan or rebellious angels played a much bigger role than we've ever been told. It really makes you wonder, doesn't it? What else has been left out of the story? These ideas weren't just rejected, they were erased. Why? Because controlling the story meant controlling the people. If you could shape how the world was created, you could shape how people saw their place in it, and most importantly, who held the power. Let's be real, religious and political power have always been intertwined. If these alternative stories had made it into the Bible, it could have thrown the church's authority into chaos. The official version of creation paints a neat, simple picture, one God, one story, one truth. But as we're starting to see, the reality might have been much messier and far more controversial. We've talked about why these stories were hidden, but let's dive into the heart of it, Gnosticism. If you've never heard of it, don't worry, it's not exactly on the Sunday school syllabus. But maybe it should be. Gnosticism wasn't just another belief system. It was a movement that had the potential to turn everything upside down, how people saw the universe, creation, and even God. Gnostics weren't your typical believers. They had a radically different worldview, one that completely challenged the mainstream Christian church. While the mainstream Christian church was teaching that the world was good, created by a loving God, the Gnostics saw things differently. They looked at the world full of disease, suffering, and death and thought, Wait a second, this can't be the work of a perfect creator. To the Gnostics, the physical world wasn't a paradise, but a prison, and the being who made it. Not exactly the God we've been taught to believe in. Instead, they believed in a higher, unknowable God, a pure source of light and goodness. But the creator of the material world? That's where things get strange. In their view, the world was created by a lower, flawed being they called the Demiurge. And here's where it gets really spicy. The Demiurge was often identified with the God of the Old Testament, the same one who said, let there be light. But in Gnostic thought, this so-called God wasn't benevolent at all. He was more like a cosmic jailer, keeping humanity trapped in ignorance. And who was helping him keep the world under control? None other than Satan, or at least a figure resembling what we think of as Satan. In Gnostic texts, like the Apocryphon of John, the Demiurge is described as arrogant, ignorant, and downright malevolent. He believes he's the only God, but the Gnostics saw him as a pretender, a deceiver who created the world to entrap souls in a flawed, material existence. It's a radical twist on the creation story, one where the world itself is a trap, and the God we've been taught to revere is, in fact, the Jailer. The Gnostics believed they had the key to escaping the world's deception, secret knowledge, or Gnosis. They thought that only by gaining this hidden wisdom could people truly understand their divine origins and break free from the endless cycle of suffering and death. To them, Gnosticism wasn't just a different take on Christianity. It was a total rejection of the legitimacy of the physical world. They saw it all as a cosmic scam, and they weren't afraid to say it. That's why the church saw them as such a massive threat. Gnosticism wasn't just a personal belief system. It was a full-on revolt against the very reality 
that mainstream Christianity was promoting. If the physical world was a prison and the creator a fraud, what did that mean for everything the church stood for? That's why Gnostic texts were banned. Not because they were some fringe cult, but because they were asking the kind of dangerous questions that could unravel the entire foundation of Christian doctrine. But here's the thing Gnostic ideas didn't just disappear when the church started suppressing them. They went underground, kept alive in secret, quietly challenging the official narrative for centuries. These ideas didn't just vanish, they went underground, preserved in secret communities and texts that remain hidden for centuries. Take the Nag Hammadi Library. Discovered in Egypt in 1945, it's packed with Gnostic writings that had been tucked away since the 4th century. These texts reveal a radically different version of Christianity, one where the true enemy isn't just Satan, but the very fabric of the world itself. Now, let's talk about Lucifer. When most people hear that name, they immediately think of Satan, right? But hold on for a moment. The story of Lucifer is far more complicated than we've been led to believe. First, let's break down the basics. The name Lucifer literally means light bringer or morning star. That doesn't exactly scream Prince of Darkness, does it? Here's the twist. It wasn't always a name associated with Satan. In fact, the link between Lucifer and Satan developed much later in biblical interpretation. The term Lucifer appears in Isaiah 14, 12, where it describes the fall of a morning star. However, the context of that passage actually refers to a Babylonian king. So where does this idea that Lucifer equals Satan come from? Let's dive into that because it's a fascinating journey through history and theology. Where did the idea of Satan even come from? Well, early Christian writers began interpreting that verse in Isaiah as a symbol of Satan's fall from grace, the classic tale of rebellion against God and being cast out of heaven. But here's something intriguing. Lucifer wasn't always seen as evil. Some early interpretations depicted Lucifer as a tragic figure, an angel who fell not out of pure malice, but out of a genuine desire to bring enlightenment. Think about that for a moment, Lightbringer and enlightenment. Could it be that Lucifer's fall was about something deeper than just pride? In some ancient stories, Lucifer's rebellion wasn't merely about defying God for the sake of evil. It was about challenging God's plan because he believed there was a better way, a smarter way. This shifts the narrative, showing us a different perspective, where Lucifer isn't just an evil figure lurking in the shadows, but a being who questioned authority and sought to bring knowledge to the masses. Some even go so far as to view Lucifer as a liberator, someone who wanted to free humanity from ignorance and the constraints imposed upon them. This radically different view invites us to reconsider everything we thought we knew about this enigmatic figure. Let's start with a little background. The creation story we all know comes from the book of Genesis, where God creates the world in six days, and on the seventh day, he rests. But did you know that there are other ancient texts and religious writings that tell different versions of this story? Some of these texts have been hidden, lost, or even deliberately left out of the Bible we know today. One such account, found in the apocryphal texts and Gnostic writings, hints at a more complex tale involving not just God, but other powerful beings, including Satan. According to these sources, Satan may have had a hand in the creation of the physical world a concept that is both shocking and controversial to mainstream religious beliefs. But why would this version be kept secret? What implications does it hold? To understand this alternate narrative, we need to look at Gnostic beliefs, which flourished in the early centuries of Christianity. Gnosticism proposed a dualistic view of the universe, where the physical world was seen as a flawed creation, a realm of suffering and imperfection. According to Gnostic texts, the true supreme God was not the creator of the physical world. Instead, a lesser deity, known as the Demiurge, was responsible. Some Gnostic sects even identified this Demiurge with figures like Satan or Lucifer, suggesting that the physical world was created not out of divine love, but as a trap to imprison souls. This narrative directly contradicts the idea of a benevolent God creating a perfect world, 
which is why it was deemed heretical and suppressed by early church leaders. Over time, several religious texts that offered alternative views of creation were either banned or labeled as heretical. Some of these include the Gospel of Judas, the Apocalypse of Adam, and the Secret Book of John. These writings were often destroyed or hidden away, but a few copies survived. The Gospel of Judas, for instance, presents Judas not as a traitor, but as someone who understood Jesus' secret teachings. It also hints at a complex universe where different entities, not just the God of the Bible, play a role in creation. The secret book of John explicitly describes a figure called Yaldabaoth, a distorted and malevolent being who creates the material world. This being is often associated with Satan, reinforcing the idea that our world is not the work of a kind and loving God, but of a flawed and deceitful power. You might be wondering, why was this story excluded from the Bible? The early church played a critical role in determining which texts were included in the official canon. Anything that didn't align with their teachings was labeled as heresy. The notion that Satan, or a being like him, was responsible for creating the earth contradicted the image of a perfect, all-powerful God, which the church wanted to uphold. Accepting this alternative narrative would imply that our world is inherently flawed and that there is a power struggle between the true divine and the creator of the physical realm. This was too radical and potentially destabilizing for the early Christian community, so these texts were cast aside and the concept of a singular benevolent creator became the official doctrine. If we entertain the possibility that there's some truth to this banned creation story, it opens up a Pandora's box of questions. Could it be that the physical world we live in is a flawed construct, not created out of divine love, but as a sort of cosmic prison? This idea challenges the core of many religious beliefs and forces us to rethink the nature of good and evil. It also raises the question of why knowledge of this alternate creation story was hidden for so long. Is it because the truth would grant too much power to the people, or because it would unravel the foundations of organized religion? While we may never have definitive answers, exploring these hidden narratives gives us a deeper understanding of ancient beliefs and the struggles for power, knowledge, and truth that shaped our world. Welcome to Blessovia Science TV, where we take you on an exhilarating journey through the cosmos and unravel the mysteries of science. We are excited to offer you the opportunity to become a valued member of our ever-growing community of cosmic enthusiasts and knowledge seekers exclusive access to cosmic content. As a member of Blisovia Science TV, you will gain exclusive access to a treasure trove of cosmic content, including documentaries, interviews with leading scientists, space missions updates, and awe-inspiring visualizations of the universe, live Q, and a sessions with experts. Your membership will grant you the chance to participate in live Q and a sessions with renowned scientists, astronomers, and space explorers. Get your burning questions answered by those who push the boundaries of human knowledge. Embark on a journey that spans the cosmos and join us in unraveling the secrets of the universe. Become a Blasovia Science TV member today and together we will reach for the stars. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and share. Don't forget to leave your comment.